What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mine Tech and today we have a little bit of a different video. I was actually working on a project this week for a Proxmox high availability cluster but unfortunately I ran into some issues with that so I didn't get the project done. It's a Sometimes it's just what happens. So today we got a little bit of a different video. We're gonna be talking about some of the recent updates that came out for Proxmox, both for the virtual environment and the backup server software. So let's get right into it. So I just came over to the VE release over here. Now there is a bunch of different pages. They have their full update breakdown where it goes over all the changes. It has like the entire change log of what's been changed throughout all the versions. They actually have a video as well where they're talking about the highlights of what they updated in this update and everything else so there is a ton of uh literature out there what you could read through but we're just going to kind of hit on some of the stuff that they changed in the ve so they made some additions to the firewall that's built into the proxmox ve and if you're not really sure what i'm talking about when i say ve it's just the typical virtual environment it is what we use for our virtual environment for making virtual machines uh lxc containers and whatever else you do in your proxmox server so pretty much they're just trying to build out the firewall more on the proxmox side so you could have more of an sdn so it's like a software defined network so you can have what they're calling vnets so kind of you can vlan out your vms more and have more precise firewall rules of what could do what within the network, how it can go out, stuff like that. So those are some add-ons to the firewall side. I don't really work with the firewall or the Proxmox built-in networking, so I really can't say much on this side, but it's good to see that, you know, they're adding more for SDN and stuff like that. Move over to the next highlight. It looks like they're working on some sort of new webhook system. So we could use HTTP to do different webhooks to send out alerts for stuff like updates, cluster issues, any backups that might be running on your server a whole bunch of different stuff so i'm hoping maybe we can get something for like a discord availability and we can all link that in with our discord notifications that we might use for other services in our home lab but i guess we'll see how this goes for how that works out they added a new view so instead of your normal view in your main web gui when you go into your proxmox server where it kind of shows your nodes if you have them clustered out and it's going to break out by machine and then your storage you can now show a new view of by tag so if you use the different tags to tag out your vms and anything else you can use it for a view like that so you kind of prioritize the more important tags to whatever or however you might use them there was an update for ceph which is one of the protocols ceph is using was updated it looks like we also got faster container backup. So if you back up your Proxmox server, more specifically the containers, and you use the Proxmox backup server, we're going to get faster backup times now going back and forth. So if you're not aware, I mean, this is probably about four or five months ago now, Broadcom changed out the licensing for ESXi, so pretty much eliminated it for home lab use because now you have to pay a high license fee to use it. So Proxmox kind of stepped in and has become the new hypervisor that a lot of people are using in place of ESXi. Proxmox didn't accept ESXi hosts, more specifically the OVA, OVF, OVH files, whatever outputted from ESXi, you couldn't just put straight into Proxmox. Previous updates have changed, so now you can import those ESXi machines and put them into Proxmox. And now they're going even a step further. So when you're setting up your disks for your Proxmox server, when it has like the types, so it's a like for os storage iso storage actual vms container storage stuff like that they're actually going to have another type called import and now from there you'd be able to click on that drive in your node and be able to import ova ovf files straight into it to be using your proxmox server so this is a big jump because in the past it was a very complicated process to import the ovf or ova files into the server and then you would have to convert them over, import them into a machine, and it was a whole process. So I'm really happy to see that this is something that's becoming more available. I've actually had in the past where I was getting VMs from school that were built out in ESXi, and to run them in my Proxmox server was a huge hassle. So I'm really glad to see stuff like this is coming out more. So like I said, it is available to upgrade. However, if you are somebody who uses the Proxmox helper scripts, I can't confirm that all the scripts will be available to you still on 8.3. If we come over here to the change log, it, it does look like they changed the post install script and something else, maybe a security feature in that script to add PVE 8.3, but I can't confirm that all the other scripts are going to be still working. So if you're somebody who's like a, a, a helper script power user, or you, you know use them often to deploy a lot of stuff, you might want to hold off just till we can confirm that more of the scripts are accepted in 8.3. 
but if not no big deal upgrade to 8.3 one other thing i will say 8.3 has only been out for a week so it is still pretty fresh and there might be bugs in it i was working on a project this week that was a proxmox cluster project and all the nodes were running 8.3 and for some reason i couldn't get any of it to work the way i needed it to now it most likely was user error so i won't knock it completely but it also might be some of the bugs because everything was running 8.3 so just take that into account if you're trying to upgrade your machine. You might want to wait just a little bit longer until the next version of 8.3 comes out, just so it's a little more stable. We can confirm that some of the bugs might be fixed. Now moving over to Backup Server. So Backup Server does upgrade to version 3.3. The last update was back in April, I believe. So it has been some time since we got an update. And we pretty much got some similar stuff as well as some additional ones. So if you're somebody that runs the backup server and then maybe you have an off-site location that runs the backup server as well. So now you can push off-site or you can push from off-site back to on-site. You no longer have to pull from off-site or pull from on-site to off-site, vice versa. So it is an additional feature, make it a little bit easier if you are somebody who utilizes off-site backups. It looks like now they're also doing support for removable data stores. So you can have multiple data stores that can be configured. And you can make them removable storage media so maybe you have like a usb hard drive that you might have into your backup server you can now use that as another way to back up your data store again we're seeing over here we have webhook integration so hopefully we are getting stuff like that so we can get some notifications when our backup server has functions like backups are completed and stuff like that and we also have as i mentioned in the ve updates that we're working to get faster container backups over across Really, other than that, that's really all that's going on with the backup server. So the update just came out today on the 28th. And like I said, the VE update came out last Friday. I think it was the 22nd. But so these updates are still pretty fresh. Like I said, you might want to hold off still on just doing these updates. Just give them, you know, like 3.31 or 8.3.1, just so we can iron out any of the bugs that might have come out on the initial updates. But yeah, it's really all the news I have on Proxmox at this point. Sorry, we didn't really get to do a project this week. I've just been super busy this week between school and I was actually testing for my CCNA this week. So I have been grinding out studying for the last week to try to really knock it out and got it done. I did pass. I took my test on Tuesday. I've been studying for about a year and a half for this test. I took it back in September and I actually failed. So I was really feeling uh, beat up by it, but I took the time, I studied like crazy the last two months, and I went to my test Tuesday. It was really hard, I won't lie. The CCNA is definitely a challenging test, but I passed and I am beyond happy that I did. But I don't want to make this whole video about talking about the CCNA, but that is just one of the other reasons why we didn't get a project done this week for a video. So sorry about that, guys, but I will make it up because this project that I'm working on will definitely be a good one. And I hope you guys like it. As always, I'll have all the links to all the gear in my home lab below. If you guys want to check any of it out, maybe pick something up. We are having Black Friday sales coming up and everything else, so some of the gear might be on discounts. And if you're interested, I do have a hardware sales in my Discord where I post out links of good deals I find on hardware throughout the weeks so or whatever it might be. So if you want to join the Discord and find that, I'll also have a link to that below. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.